Hey everyone, this is the latest entry in my series of videos about ideas from my book, The Scout Mindset, which just came out on April 13th, and I now have a physical copy. Very exciting. Um, in the book I talk about how humans are very often in what I call soldier mindset, in which we're motivated to defend our beliefs against any evidence that might threaten them. And scout mindset is an alternative to that, because the scout's role is not to attack or defend, it's to go out and see what's out there and form as accurate a map as possible of a situation, including things you don't know or are uncertain about. Um, and so the book is about how and why to be more of a scout. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about one of the most common objections or hesitations that I hear to the idea of being uh, more scout-like. And uh, it has to do with activism, um, trying to change the world in whatever way. And the objection is basically, sure, scout mindset is good if you're a scientist or a judge or just someone whose job is to sit around and think all day. But if you want to change the world, then you should be 100% convinced that you're right and you should stick to your guns. And you know, if you're not the most objective thinker in the world, then that's not really a problem. So I want to talk about what I think is wrong with this common wisdom. Um, and basically, <laughs> it's true that being passionately convinced that you're right and that people who disagree with you are all wrong and evil, that can be very motivating. Um, that can motivate you to go out and take action. The problem is just that not all actions are equally effective. So I like to think about this in terms of a graph with um, two axes, because of course I do. Here's what I mean. One axis is how impactful an action is. So are you making a big positive difference in the world or are you accomplishing little or even maybe being counterproductive and undermining your own cause? The other axis is how emotionally satisfying is the action. Some actions make you feel really validated and righteous and good about yourself for you know, standing up for your values. And sometimes you can get both impact and satisfaction. Like if you imagine an activist working on a political campaign for a candidate that he really believes in in a really important and close race, that's something where your efforts, I think, can have a large impact. And it's also really exciting to work on an important campaign. Um, it feels like you're in the trenches with your team fighting an urgent battle. And then there are other impactful actions that are not as exciting, like trying to get new legislation passed, which can be a very slow and incremental process. And it often requires negotiating or compromising with groups that you disagree with. And that can be the opposite of satisfying because, you know, you have to make nice with people you don't like and who you think are doing bad things. And then some actions are much more satisfying, but don't really have much impact. Like arguing with people on the internet, it can feel really good to, you know, scathingly destroy someone's argument against something that you're passionate about. But how much does that really accomplish in the world? I would say very little. And then some actions are satisfying, but actively harmful for your goals. Like you might've noticed that a lot of activists spend a lot of energy attacking other groups who agree with them 90%, but they fight over the remaining 10%. Freud called this the narcissism of minor differences, that basically we feel the most compulsion to distinguish ourselves from people who are most similar to us. So those are some hypothetical examples of actions and where I would place them on the graph of impact and satisfaction. Um, you might place them differently, but the core point is that if you want to actually make a positive impact for your cause, you need to be good at asking yourself clearly and honestly, um, is what I'm doing really impactful or is it just emotionally satisfying to me? And my favorite example of activists with this kind of scout mindset comes from New York in the early 90s during the peak of the AIDS epidemic in the US. Uh, this group of activists was called the Treatment Action Group and originally they were focused on a kind of attention grabbing, confrontational, splashy protests designed to raise awareness about AIDS and pressure the government into acting faster to stop it. So, for example, once they went at night to the home of conservative Senator Jesse Helms and, um, under the cover of darkness, enveloped his house in a giant condom. 
Um, so that's an example of their early activism. And they did succeed in getting the government to release an AIDS drug earlier than originally planned, which seemed like a win uh, until a couple years later when it turned out that the drug was actually no more effective at staving off AIDS than a placebo. It had just seemed effective in early trials. So this was a huge blow to the activists, as you might imagine, um, many of whom were HIV positive and had friends who were. So uh, it really caused them to stop and reassess and decide, you know, we need to change course. We need to refocus our attention on changing the way the government is doing science about AIDS drugs and make sure that we have trials that are going to be rigorous enough to give us drugs that we can be confident in while also being as fast as possible because people are dying. So none of the activists had a background in science. Um, one was a lawyer. I think one was a screenwriter. Uh, but they resolved to teach themselves the science that they needed to know. And they would meet once a week for science club and they read textbooks and medical journals. Um, and they kept a running list of vocabulary that they needed to memorize um, about AIDS and study design. And eventually they uh, became so well versed in the science around AIDS and study design that they were able to get an audience with the scientists at NIH. And they had so much credibility at that point um, that they were able to convince the government scientists to change the type of study they were running um, and adopt a new design that would be still rigorous but much faster than the original. And so in one sense this was amazing, right, to, to be able to uh, win this amount of influence and power to control the situation. But it was also tough for the activists because, you know, this was a group that they had been fighting for years and they were, uh, I think, justifiably kind of angry at the government for dragging their heels and being kind of apathetic when so many people were dying. Um, so it was tough for that reason. And also one of the activists commented later that this moment, this crossing over into the halls of power was bittersweet for them because we would never be able to be so pure and fervent in our belief that we were right because now we were actually responsible for what was happening. So it was tough, but it paid off because within a couple years, the new study that they had convinced the government to adopt had produced two drugs that in combination with each other cut the mortality rate from AIDS by 60% which was a huge deal because um, the mortality rate had just been skyrocketing up until that point. So this was an unprecedented step in the fight against AIDS. And it was made possible by the Treatment Action Group being just relentlessly committed to asking themselves, what is the most impactful thing we can do to fight AIDS? Um, and sometimes that meant uh, giving up a strategy they had been committed to. And sometimes it meant working with groups they didn't necessarily like or agree with. Um, and I should emphasize that scout mindset does not always mean compromising or cooperating with groups. Sometimes the confrontational approach is actually most effective. I think it's arguable that that was true um, earlier in the epidemic. But you know, you need that kind of objective, clear-eyed scout mindset to be able to tell, is this a case in which confrontation is going to be most effective, or is this a case in which something else is going to be more effective? So I love that story. And I tell it, and many others, in my book, The Scout Mindset, which you can get at the link I'll put in the description to this video. Um, you should consider subscribing and check out my podcast, Rationally Speaking. Um, that's all for today. I'll see you guys next time.